You know, in this past week, we've had like four power outages here, ranging from a couple minutes to like a day. And that's getting kind of ridiculous, not to mention expensive, because we have a house generator that runs through propane like crazy. So what I want to do is build a battery backup system. Now, in order to do that, there's a couple of things I need, right? And one of those things is one of these. This is an inverter. And the model that I'm using here is a Sun Gold Power Inverter. I picked this unit out specifically and contacted them to see if they wanted to work together, which they did. So they sent out this unit for me. However, they're not sponsoring the video, just to get that clear. So this video is for you if you're currently dealing with power grid insecurities and you want to kind of protect yourself and your family, but you're a little bit unsure about the equipment. Like, what is it that I need? And like, what do these boxes really do? What are they for? Well, th this, is, this is what I'm going to go over today. So first of all, what is an inverter? Well, an inverter takes DC power that is like in your batteries coming in from solar panels and then converts it into AC power. AC power is what's in your house, what's in your outlet. And you can't just plug batteries into the wall <laughs> and expect the power to go right there. You need a way to kind of have an intermediary. And that's what an inverter does. Now, the reason why we need a battery backup system when there's power outage is because we have a well pump. So when the power goes, um, we have no water. So we have a house generator, uh, uses propane, and it's getting to be really expensive. So the power goes out and you're thinking, hmm, is this gonna be $500 in propane? Is this gonna be $1,000 in propane? Just to keep the lights on and keep the water on and everything, and, and it's a lot of money. Not to mention, it's pretty loud. There's a better way, right? Yeah, there is. You can set up a battery backup system, which is what I want to do. So here I have two different inverters. These are both Sun Gold Power inverters, both 6,000 watt, but they do have a couple of differences. In short, this is an off-grid inverter and this is a grid tied inverter. Now this I've had for a while and I've hooked this up to batteries. I've actually run the table saw from it. Um, it's a great inverter. When I started the saw stop, the watts out of the battery shunt recorded near or over 7,000 watts. Then once it started up, it runs at about 1,200 watts and then cutting. And then when cutting, it goes to about 2,000. This, on the other hand, uh, is a grid-tied inverter. So what does that mean? That means that you can actually connect this to a 240-volt, 30-amp outlet breaker in your wall and funnel power through here. Of course, you need to draw power from somewhere, so you need either a battery bank. This is 48 volts, so I need 48 volt batteries. Um, or you can use solar panels. This actually has a solar charge controller inside of it. You can funnel that power directly through here into the wall. So you don't even need batteries with this setup. Or you can have solar funneling into the batteries, funneling into the walls. So there are lots of different ways to set this up. And I guess I should clarify that even though this is a grid tied inverter, we're not actually tying it to the grid at this point. This will be used internally for power outage situations. However, when we do expand the solar panel setup, then we will hook it up to the grid. Um, at a later date. And at that point you'll need permits, etc. Although local codes and regulations vary depending on location. Uh, so this is more of a general guide on how we're doing this. Okay, so let's take this off. And then there's like a little clip right here. And clip. And take it off. Okay, so to connect we have AC input. So here we have ground, live one, live two, and neutral. AC output, the same there, ground, live one, live two, and neutral. You can see that this is where the PV says, so PV is the solar, so plus and minus, go through here, and then down here we have DC input. Now, there are a couple of neat features about this unit that I like. It has Wi-Fi. Um, this one right here does not have any communication, so you can basically control it and monitor it through Wi-Fi. That is a nice feature. Another thing you can do, you can hook this up in parallel. So because we are designing this for a backup power outage situation, we're going to use one um, and design it for that. But 
if you, for example, were setting up an off-grid situation where you were relying upon this completely, we would probably need three of these. And you could hook them up in parallel, and then they, these units could communicate with each other and they could communicate with the batteries as well. One thing that is nice is that this has the solar charge controller built in, uh, whereas this one does not. So that means that it can take that DC power coming from solar and it can you know, clean it up and move it into the DC in the batteries or move it directly into the wall. Another thing you can do uh, with a system like this is that you can have it run as a UPS. So if you have sensitive equipment, computers, whatever else, that you don't want to be exposed to the, the possibility of a power outage, then you can run those systems through here in the same way using this battery bank so that it would be relatively seamless in the case of a power outage. So we'll probably do set something up like that as well. This is the way the battery connection go. And we've got a lug here. This is a pretty tight area right here. A bit too tight, really. Um, here, I have one of the batteries that I'm going to be using for this. I'm going actually to set up six batteries to start with. So these are 48 volt, 50 amp hour batteries, so about 25 hundred watt hour batteries. So let's see what we got here. This is not on and nothing is on. So I have uh, this hooked up to the battery here. So this is DC input. This is where the batteries goes in. So we have positive and negative. These are connected here with a lug on top here that you go through here. Okay, then we have PV. This is solar, so positive and negative. This is where you plug in your solar panels. And then we have AC output. So I just have a 120 volt um, outlet right here connected. Um, this is where you would normally have a thicker line going into your breaker box and then distributing the power out. This is DC input, so this is where you would charge up this your batteries from, so also going into the wall. So we have green going into ground, black going into live one, and since this is only a 120 volt line, we don't have a live two. If we had a 240, we would, and we have a, a neutral going into here. And if you were to connect uh, several of these units, this is where you would hook them up. Not really too many parts to connect to. We have the solar, batteries, oh, AC output, AC input. One thing to, to think about is that there are a lot of accessory parts to buy that you may not plan for ahead of time. You need to put fuses between many things, you need you know, thick wire, and all of those things do add up. Um, and you want to make sure that you have a lot of protections in place. So this is going to sit on the wall vertically. Now I'm currently debating about uh, what to install it on because ideally it needs some like heat circulation and they don't recommend putting it on like wood. So I'm thinking about building like something with like aluminum bars for some circulation or maybe a concrete like a cement backer board. I haven't figured that out exactly yet. And I'm looking at this system as rather like flexible in the sense that I'll be able to use it as battery backup, but I'll also be able to funnel solar into it and, and kind of build on that over time. And then also over time use it to power my EV and maybe even use it to power my house more in the future. I think that's the thing about systems like this, um, that you may build onto them over time. And not everybody have like the budget or you know the option to create like your dream system right off the bat, and that's okay. Because you can create a small system that helps you in some ways, and then you can you know build onto it over time. And this this one, for example, I mean you could build onto it since it has that capability of the parallel connection, and you can add up to three more of these. And of course you can connect it to a rather large uh, battery rack. And and I think the solar input maximum is like 6,000 watts on this, so quite a lot of solar. I got a question on Instagram, somebody asked like, okay, how do you, how do you decide what you need uh, when you set up a system like this? Like what is the startup cost? Of course, that's going to depend majorly on your situation. Um, for us, um, I can kind of go over how we're thinking about this, like the size that we need. What needs to be working during a power outage? Uh, basically, we have three things. Number one, the well pump. The well pump, it's a 240 volt, 15 amp pump. It runs for about four minutes each time uh, in order to fill up this 35 gallon water tank that we have. Normally it runs maybe seven to 10 times a day, but I would imagine if we had a power outage and you were more conservative, you didn't take showers, you didn't run the dishwasher, do laundry, that kind of thing, maybe it would run more like five times a day. 
Um, so 200 watt hours each time times five, that's a thousand watt hours. So we need a thousand watts dedicated to the well pump during a 24 hour period. And here's the thunder. You know, I'm just sitting here waiting for the power to, to go. It has happened so much lately. It's like I'm anxious about it. Anyway, um, next up the fridge freezer unit. I did a test in the past that uses about 2,500 watt hours during a 24 hour period. So there we go. And then let's add an additional 2000 watt hours just for miscellaneous, for lighting, for a couple of outlets you can charge up your computer, your phone, you know, keep a couple fans going because we're not gonna have AC or heat connected to this. So it's good to you know, have additional, a little bit of additional extra. So that is a total of 5,500 watt hours that we need to have available during this um, 24 hour period. Okay, so we're going to start with setting up six of these 2500 watt hour batteries. That's a total of 15,000 watt hours uh, when charged up. You know, we're going to have enough for two to three days in a power outage situation. That is, of course, the battery requirement. Then you have to think about the inverter. So we, this is a 6000 watt inverter, which means that you can draw 6000 watts at the same time. You could probably actually spike a little bit higher than that. But uh, so 6,000 watts is kind of your, your upper limit. Um, and of course it's good to kind of go a little bit bigger than you think. I don't think most of the time we're actually going to draw 6,000 watts. Um, but the other thing we you know, want to take into account is so that we can charge the car up using the same uh, system as well. So it's a little bit oversized. Plus, you know, it has a 6,000 watt uh, solar capability as well. So that's the reason why we uh, chose this inverter and that we're sizing the battery bank uh, to the size. Now you can always expand your battery bank, right? You can add more batteries over time um, and we probably will do that as well uh, as you grow this. As well as more solar panels. <laughs> that is really a priority. <laughs> And like always, everything I'm talking about will be linked in the description below. Um, let me know if you have any uh, questions about this. Um, thanks for watching. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess the thunder went away. It looks sunny now. <laughs> this is like living in Virginia though. <laughs> when we lived in Oregon, we never had any power outages or very rarely. But here, uh, depending on the time of year, they happen very frequently. Um, at least living out here in the, in the, in the country, I guess. Uh, but anyway, uh, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you soon. Bye.